I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media, and today on the Crypto Coin Show, we have Yogev Shelley, the CEO of tinytap.com. Yogev, welcome to the show, and thank you for taking the time. Love, loving being here. Thank you, Ashton. Uh, good to meet everyone. I'm Yogev from TinyTap. And thank you so much for coming in to talk a little bit about the education space, uh, how we can bring innovation to education, and also how we're in introducing decentralization, Web3, NFTs, all this innovative technology into the education space as well, which I believe could uh, really benefit from this kind of technology because you know a lot, a lot of the education space, uh, it, it's hard to stay up to date on how quickly uh, all this technology is coming out and if we can incorporate this directly into the education space I believe it would benefit uh, not just teachers but students and, and the whole industry there so I would love to start off our conversation with just a high-level overview of you know what is tiny tap working on in the education space and what is the open campus protocol and then we'll dive into all the details thank you for that and I think you touched you already touched a very important point there's a lot of advancement going on in tech around the globe, but the education system as we know it traditionally is kind of slow to adapt. Uh, traditionally, and in most countries, the education system is a very top-down system. It means that everything starts from the top, from governments or from market needs. So if you're a company, you're going to focus on math and English for English-speaking uh, audience. And if you're in any other part of the world, you're going to create content to follow the government's agenda. But in reality, there are so many niches, so many communities. Uh, check out YouTube, for example. I love using YouTube as an example because uh, before YouTube, we had very s vertical broadcasting system that catered to very specific uh, audiences. And it didn't make sense to create a show about, uh, you know, just this specific uh, about Pokemon Go or about uh, Web3 or about finance or just a show that talks about the uh, concepts in, in, in blockchain. But with YouTube, creators could find their own audience, and there is enough of an audience when you have the right channel. And so that's what, that is exactly what we're working on in education. We're trying to build, we're, build, we're building a community-led education system. So if, if I have to start with what we're doing here today, we are talking here today about how you can create an education system that follows the community needs, that follows the market needs. And mm -hmm. our story doesn't, doesn't start uh, on April 28th when we've launched the EDU token and when Open Campus basically launched a month ago. It actually goes back to 2012. So in 2012, I've started TinyTap. And TinyTap is an established company creating, generating millions of dollars in consumer revenue that is paid to access, to access teacher-made educational games. So you can go on TinyTap already today. Go on tinytap.com or download the app, the iPad app preferably the iPad app if you have access to, and you too can create an interactive educational game, connect it with a few games and have an interactive course, and simply generate revenue every time that someone learns from your content. So teachers create content on whatever they want to teach. It might be in, he in Hebrew, my own language. It might be in Arabic, which is a huge market for us. It might be about religion or it might be about finance and education. Mm. Uh, our age range is kind of 2 to 12. That's Tiny Tap's sweet spot. The content creation process is like creating a presentation. You design a slide by slide, but you also make it interactive with your own voice. So that was really the uh, origin of Tiny Tap, building those tools for teachers. And teachers adopted them before they, we, didn't, we could even do a revenue share with them. They've created that so they can cater to their students' needs because teachers are creators. They have ideas. They have passions and they want to contribute. They don't want to just take off the shelf products or wait for the school system to create that product that they think. Uh, just today, I think I wrote in one of the Facebook posts, uh, like a disappointed post about everybody we're talking about AI this year. Now the school year is starting, but there isn't any school that's really delivering a comprehensive uh, curriculum to, to keep up with it. Mm -hmm. We all know it's going to take years, like coding took years, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but it doesn't have to be like that because we can flip it and create financial incentives between, between all parties so the market can kind of reward and help uh, create the content that they want. So that's a quick overview of, of what TinyTap is. TinyTap is a platform, teachers create content and earn, earn, earn revenue from families. We're really good at selling to consumers. Uh, one of the top 10 grossing kids apps on the US App Store, if you go to the App Store, you'll see us there. And 
Last year, we've partnered with Animoca Brands. We've partner, partnered with uh, Animoca Brands and decided on how we can use Web3 to take all of this concept of decentralized education to the next level. And that's what I'd love to, uh, to share more about here today with you. Amazing, Yogev. And yeah, it is incredible uh, getting this technology in the iPads into the hands of kids. I feel like it's 100 times better than uh, you know, being in the classroom and with all these distractions and the teacher trying to teach out of a book that was written 10 years ago by you know, the top down making its way finally down. Uh, it probably will take you know, five years for them <laughs> to even get anything to do with AI into the book into the hands of the students. And when you have a decentralized nature like this, uh, you don't have as many levels of bureaucracy to get more newer relevant information about the world into the hands of students. And I feel like that's a major advantage to the decentralized nature of it. Yeah. More than that, I, I would even add that the teacher at the bottom, like if, if it's a top-down top system education today, then it starts with you know massive uh, budgets like usually the education budget also in the u.s is like second only to the defense budget so there's a lot of money but we don't see it in the streets and we def definitely don't see it in teacher salary mm. yeah. so it's not the most reward rewarding profession uh, everywhere maybe except finland mm -hmm. but uh and it shouldn't be like that because we're losing a lot of great talents would really want to spend their life teaching mm -hmm. and we're also we also have a retention problem with quality teachers who are already in the system. And so can we change it so we, are, we, we can offer other financial returns to teachers? Mm -hmm. And that's a little bit of what uh, using blockchain ca can help do. It can help reward the individual teacher who contributes content, just like artists find a new way to, to monetize their, their uh, art and create a community around it. So do teachers who create the right educational content about the right topic can find an audience. Um, I'll give you an example. When I was in, a, um, yeah, I was when I was at Zynga in 2014. We were uh, we won we won one million dollar from Verizon for the most powerful answer in education. It was a big award. We got the first prize from Verizon CEO. Verizon is a U.S. telecom company, um, and we stay. I stayed in the states for a year, and with me, and I studied in an accelerator out of Zynga, and with me was uh, those two ladies from uh, Francesca Cavallo. And, an, and another lady, I'm sorry, I don't remember the name right now. Uh, we had a company about that was that created news for kids. And they kind of, they were with us in, in the accelerator and they ended up uh, releasing a book actually on Kickstarter, the, the most profitable Kickstarter campaign. It's called the uh, Rebel Girls, good, good night stories for rebel girls. Mm. And the book was all about empowering little girls by telling the stories of powerful women who accomplished a lot of things in their life. And me and you are men. We're used to hearing about men changing the world. It's like, it's just second like nature. But as, as little girls, you don't get that example enough. And it's hard to be, to be something that you can see. And they've created that. That become, it became a world phenomenon. A phenomenon. They did uh, the second book. They have a world tour. And this is showed you the power of a community that just happens to want to focus on women empowerment. And they're willing to vote by putting their money into that and by helping this become the reality. And so what we want to do with Web3 is very similar. We want to help communities come around a topic that they care about and give them the right utility to kind of make everything work on the incentive level. Mm. It's a great story, Yogev. And that part that you mentioned at the beginning about making it sustainable uh, and, and profitable for teachers so that they're not struggling. It's such an important job to be teaching uh, our kids, the, you know, the, the future kids that are going to be the ones that are the workforce in, in, in 20 years from now. They're going to uh, change the pace of the workforce of the world. But in the traditional education system, a lot of the teachers are just struggling to make, make ends meet. And a lot of people don't want to become teachers because they, they don't want to have to live paycheck to paycheck. Uh, and I see how potentially this decentralized nature could find other revenue streams for teachers um, and a way for them to connect more directly with the students, uh, but finding ways where they aren't just getting a paycheck from the government, um, they have other ways of generating revenue. Can you talk about exactly. that decentralized nature, how exactly that would work for teachers? You know, they, do they still have to go through the traditional path of a teacher and then have that as an extra, or can anybody be a teacher? How does that work? Yeah, it touched on a really on a very important point. Uh, helping educators 
get alternative revenue channels. So right now, the, the, the revenue channels that you can get as a teacher are very limited. You can, again, work at a school, work at a, work at a, work at a private school, or maybe become a tutor. Hmm. It's about that. Uh, mm-hmm. In the U.S., there's a Teach for America. Uh, that's, that's a program that where Ivy League students get to do like a year off or maybe before they start start starting so they'll have it on their CV. They are being placed in remote in different places in the US where there's lack of talent and maybe it's a uh, you know pro- 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 problematic areas that needs more support. And the kids over over there gets access to really quality uh, education. So I guess the ultimate goal is how we can keep those people of experienced uh, education in the system. And let me show, share with you what how we're using Web3 to really uh, bring all the, answer some of the challenges that we've, we've uh, covered so far. Okay, so the first aspect we're uh, le- leveraging is digital property rights. Mm-hmm. Uh, digital property rights, specifically publishing rights. Now this is an innovation that I love very much, like it's very dear to my heart because I've as a company on TinyTap, we have teachers and educators creating content, but we also partner with the publishers like Sesame Street mm-hmm. from New York, uh, Oxford, University, uh, Oxford University Press, Super Simple Songs, which is a YouTube channel with the 38 million uh, subscribers, Ping Fong, the, like the, the authors of Baby Sharks. To do those deals, it's kind of a nightmare because you have to go and, and, and write those long publishing agreements and rights and everybody's so careful about where we're going to do, uh, settle any lawsuits, etc. And it's, it's mm-hmm. kind of a nightmare. And you don't need to really do that if you have blockchain in the middle, if you have smart contract that explains exactly the rights of every par- party in a deal mm-hmm. and then executes on them, at least online. Granted, offline, taking it offline is problematic, but online is big enough of a, of a, of a pie right now that we can just share the publishing rights for online and... Mm-hmm actually uh, identify any revenue coming in and share it to the owners. So based on that, what we've created is something we call the publisher NFT. And the publisher I, 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 NFT model, um, it has NFT in the end, right? But for the audience who have been listening to Ashton's show in the past three years or maybe more, more open your mind for a second. NFT is about uh, uh, ownership. It's about smart contracts. It's about non-fungible tokens. It's not necessarily about pictures. It can be used for many or many use cases, but we use that to establish uh, ownership for publishing rights. So the way it works is like that. You take a digital assets. In our case, in TinyTap case, it's an educational game or educational course. Let's say an educational course. So it has more substance in it. And y- you, can, y- you can see online uh, on chain, exactly how much revenue that specific course has generated. So you can come and see, oh, that course has, has generated ten thousand dollars in the past year, mm-hmm. and perhaps the teacher behind this wonderful course decides to sell fifty percent of her content, just as if sh- she would have sold uh, ownership over a book. So she puts on fifty percent on ownership to the through a publisher NFT. Um, you can make a bid, buy it. Once you buy it, you become a partner. Now, for this digital assets, there are two partners. The author who created it, another distribution partner, another publishing partner. And by becoming a publishing partner, what happened is that you've helped fund, uh, you, you've, you paid for that content, for, for that uh, piece of the asset. That piece of the asset, you might have paid 5x from the revenue it actually generates, or 2x, depends on the deal. So the author behind that got... Uh, upfront funding mm-hmm. so they can create the next piece of content suddenly there's money coming in then they create more content but they also got you as a partner and you can sit on the side and collect the revenue uh, uh, as it's coming into it um you can't do that completely passively like you you, uh, you need to co- contribute so you either go and market your content uh, uh, on your own or you can pay a promotion fee wherever that content is, is published. So for example, on TinyTap, we work very hard to bring subscribers. If you want to get access to our subscribers, there's like a 10% promotion fee and then the, your content is, is featured. So that was our way of making sure this isn't, uh, um, m- making sure everything is on, on, the, on the legal side positioned as an asset, okay? Mm-hmm. It was very important that there's no passive income. You actually buy ownership into an asset like a book and now you need to go and push it ahead 
Now, the way you can push it is, let's say if you're in India, maybe you can push it on the ground level. You can go door to door. You can find a distribution partner. Maybe you can localize it and sell it there. But suddenly you have a partner to your content. And then we did exactly that with, uh, and everything is on chain. So the way I like to explain the actual technicality, I'm going to get technical a little bit because I think it's interesting. It's like buying an arcade machine with a partner. Mm. You buy digital assets. That asset sits in the mall. If someone wants to play the content, they have to put a token, let's say the EDU token, that's the open campus token. They, they get access to the piece of game, they play it, they walk away. That token isn't stored on the tiny top level. It's not like putting a YouTube video and having YouTube gets all the money and then at the end of the day, just getting some kind of check, like what you're going to do about it. Are you going to do like reverse engineering to the calculation? No way. You're just going to take whatever you're getting and, and you're happy. And I'm sure you can relate, Aston. Mm-hmm. Um, you have some experience there. Uh, and so by moving all the revenue flow on chain, we're also solving a very annoying problem right now where r- right now revenue is centralized. It goes to Spotify, it goes to YouTube, it goes to uh, Patreon, and then it is distributed. But it doesn't have to be like that. You can build an arcade machine, which is a smart contract. Someone puts in a coin, gets access to a piece of content. You come at the end of the month and withdraw your money. And that's what exactly what we built. That's the technology we build. And in practice, we've uh, we've actually piloted that. So in December and 2022, we've auctioned 12 courses on TinyTop. We took 12 courses on TinyTop. They didn't have on-chain financial history, so we were had to be transparent and we publicly advertised exactly how much revenue each asset generated. Mm-hmm. So people could make an, an, an educated the decision on, on whether to purchase them or not. Um, and uh, we've auctioned that on OpenSea, it sold out, all the courses were sold. I think, I believe it was 257 ETH at the time. And that revenue was shared back with teachers. Just a second, my Alexa just kicked in. Alexa, stop. <laughs> Everybody's listening already. Uh, so that was auction. A lot of people bought the courses. Uh, 50% of the, re- of the revenue of the 257 ETH went to teachers. I think that's like half a million dollars right now, something like that. I know it's, uh, it's, it's a very significant amount to, to share back with teachers and they got partners on the other side. And it's, you granted, it's, it's, a, it's a big amount because we sold lucrative courses, but we're going to do this very, very, very soon. So follow Open Campus, follow Tiny Top. In the next month or two, we're going to advertise the date and we're going to sell a thousand of those digital uh, uh, games on Tiny Top that people can become co-owners of them. And what I want people to remember is that they're buying a digital asset in its current state. That's like buying a house somewhere, and then the neighborhood becomes much better and improves, mm-hmm. and that asset also generates more revenue. It's like buying Mr. Beast's for first video, mm-hmm. which just came out. So it's wow. all about like what you want to support and what you believe will be a success from a business perspective. I think it's very exciting. It will allow a lot of people to be uh, asset owners, kind of mm-hmm. first-time entrepreneurs. Wow. That's a great information, Yogev, and that's quite a large sum just to start for teachers already. Uh, I'm curious, moving forward, you know, with the next set of the courses that are available and just the industry as a whole, I feel like the online education space, uh, more and more parents are becoming aware of these alternatives to learning, and I feel like the space is rapidly growing. Uh, do you have any insight into you know how quickly this space will grow, and what is the potential for Tiny Tap to you know increase their revenues and and make the internet education just a bigger part of the world? Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to share on that. Um, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll go back. Uh, I won't go back. I'll go forward in time a little bit and just uh, share with the audience here that TinyTap is an independent company. Um, it's a subsidiary of Animoca. We're, we're part with Animoca, but it's a company that runs its Web2 business, regardless of Web3. Everything Web3 happens on, on the back end. So um, people come, create content, parents subscribe to access the content for their kids. And... And buying ownership over content is done with collaboration with the teachers and by people who understand a little bit of, of, of NFT and blockchain and acquire uh, assets in it. So that's on the tiny top side. Now, there is the Open Campus side. Open Campus itself is a foundation that we've created with any more common brands, uh, Hooked Protocols, Sandbox, and other launch partners, and Gems. Gems is a 
chain of private educational ed- education schools in uh, in uh, Dubai, one of the biggest private schools in Dubai. And we've launched the uh, open campus to be a foundation with a council of five people, a mission to decentralize education by making it community-led education and the token to do that. So it's a mission and a token. The mission is to decentralize education and the token is the way to, to do that. Uh, we've launched a token via Binance Launchpad. Mm-hmm. Binance Launchpad, for those who, of you who are not familiar, is Binance prestige program where they do a diligence process with companies. They vet them. They check every tiny details. I've done a lot of VC funding in my life. This was just as, if not even more rigorous process working with them. Uh, and they uh, they like the product. They like the, the, the education space. And we've launched the EDU token with, uh, with Binance. Launchpad, it's became the second biggest listing on Binance ever, the Binance Launchpad program. The FTV of the EDU token, which I love the name personally because it kind of has a clear signal. The FTV is about seven hundred million dollars right now, with trading of about twenty million dollars a day, and, and so we've created that uh, to make sure it's not just about Tanita. Because mm-hmm. you're, you're asking about like where do parents fit, where do the rest of the world fits? Um, we're here to start right off the bat with utility for EDU, and that is. Tiny top accepting that for its services, allowing people to use EDU to buy ownership of uh, in its content. But we're just the first company to do so. The idea here is to create an uh, open campus alliance and have more companies mm. partner up and adopt the o- open campus protocol. So you can do a lot of cool things with with a token that is focused on education. So one of my favorite use cases are EDU scholarships. You, you have the option to take EDU, lock it inside of an, a, a campus card, and just give it to whoever you want to, to access education. So instead of just giving them cryptocurrency and have them trade it back to you know a Bitcoin or Ethereum or anything tradable like that, it's locked in a campus card. And they can use that in, in educational services. You can do it, go on TinyTap, maybe they can go on Udemy, maybe it's locked just to Africa regions, whatever. But this allows uh, for philanthropists, but also the foundation to start sharing edu as a way to access education across the world the philippines in india in africa mm-hmm. then have that trickle back to traditional web to company because suddenly you can go to companies and say hey there's you know a couple of a million dollars looking for education are you willing to accept edu are you willing to implement this and that that's kind of our go-to-market strategies that i'm very excited about i think it will also be a, over time would be a preferable way for anyone who want to support uh, the education space, like from big companies mm-hmm. who are donating to education instead of giving it to a charity and hoping it doesn't go to salaries, etc. An operation, you can just lock it and say, this is for children in, in Africa. This is just for people in the Philippines. That's education. So I like those kind of concepts. And we're inviting the, you know, the people listening here to follow Open Campus because there are all, all, already two incredible things that they can participate. One, we've launched a 10 million education fund. Ten million education fund, which is a fund where any educator can contribute a proposal to create their own content, up and get up to 100k in EDU to create that content, or in or in fiat, depends on where you are located in the world. But you're going to get uh, funding to create your content, and that content is going to be owner owned by you and Open Campus. So through the publisher NFT, that's one way we're kind of pushing content. And the second, eventually, we'll have an ecosystem fund, and then people can come up with new ways of how, how they can use EDU to, to advance education. So, I hope that helps. Yeah, that sounds incredible. And it's great to have those scholarships in there and the grants and funding and, and helping people uh, that are you know starting to create this kind of content to, to get off their feet. So what is the best way for uh, viewers and, and those people that are interested in creating content to learn more and to get started on that? Yeah, it's super important. Uh, opencampus.xyz that's the official website there's a lot of uh, fakes out there underscores it's dot xyz super important on twitter it is opencampus underscore xyz um, so follow twitter for sure tiny top ab it's tiny top animal car brands tiny top ab mm-hmm. follow both uh, of those accounts and to be involved in the educators fund it's opencampus.xyz uh, yeah those are the best best places to uh to follow open campus amazing yogi thank you so much for taking the time i will leave those links in the description box below as well i really appreciate you 
taking some steps forward to help the education space and to educate the future children of the world who are going to uh, make this world. So keep up the great work with you and your team. I will be following along as well for that uh, next round of the courses that are available. I'm gonna look into that as well and I'll share that information with my viewers. Uh, all the best with everything Tiny Tab moving forward and let's follow up in the near future. Thanks for listening. Uh, thanks for taking an interest in education and in education and, and the new utility on Web3. I think we all need that and uh, looking forward to work with everyone here. Thank you.